So hello everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about the uh, about the helix tron helix motif uh, among the four different types of DNA binding domains. Uh, if you remember, when we started talking about the DNA binding domains, uh, we discussed that we will uh, look at four different types of DNA binding domains: helix tron helix motif. Though we will also include homeodomain motifs. This is a special class of helix tron helix motifs. Uh, there's there's a minor difference between the two. And then we'll talk about the basic helix loop helix uh, motif, then zinc finger motif, and then Leucine zipper motif. I hope you remember that in one of the uh, previous lectures uh, we we talked about the DNA binding domains that these domains can have uh, uh, that the, the, these proteins can have a uh, specific uh, the, the the transcription factors, for example, uh, they can have specific regions of the proteins which can interact or bind to the DNA. They can interact with the DNA. So uh, these regions which bind to the DNA or interact with the DNA, we we call them uh, the DNA binding domains. So the, these are the four different types of domains. So uh, what what this domain is basically, the entire protein is quite big. So let's say this is the entire protein. This is a bigger protein, and this domain, or this any of these four domains, whether it's helix tron helix, special group helix, helix loop helix, zinc finger, or leucine zipper. So these would be the smaller regions, smaller fractions of the proteins that would interact with the DNA. The rest of the protein stays outside here. So the protein is a pretty big molecule, so it cannot penetrate uh, into the DNA. Um, so that's not going to fully penetrate into the DNA. So it can only insert the entire protein. This is which is so big. For example, it can insert its uh, uh, DNA binding motifs into the DNA. Um, let's look at this uh, this type first. So. Uh, the first type of the motif that we will be talking about is the helix tron helix motif. It's a major structural motif which can bind to the DNA and it is basically composed of two alpha helices. This is one alpha helix and this is the second alpha helix. So this is the C terminal and this is the N terminal of the helices. So these two helices are basically connected to each other via a short strand of amino acids. So this is the alpha, this is one alpha helix, and this is the second alpha helix of the protein. So the protein could be bigger. So this is just one, we, 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 are sim we are we are just talking about the motif of the protein. So this is uh, one alpha helix, and this is the second alpha helix, and both of these two alpha helices are connected to each other via a short strand of amino acids, which keeps them uh, together. We, we call this C-terminal alpha helix as a recognition helix. Why do we call it a recognition helix? Because this is the helix that is going to recognize the DNA. The other helix, that is perhaps the activation helix or this is connected to the other part of the protein. Um, this is interacting somewhere else. But the, um, but the helix that interacts with the DNA or recognizes that particular sequence we have, we have previously talked about uh, perhaps uh, somewhere here yeah so these are the DNA sequences that different types of regulatory proteins can recognize so these sequences are going to the, the, these uh, transcription factors uh, which bind to the DNA or other regulatory proteins which bind to the DNA they can recognize a particular DNA sequence and they recognize this sequence with the help of their recognition helices if you if you're talking about the helix tron helix motor for example so this recogni recognition helix would is basically composed of different amino acids so each circle basically indicates a, a carbon atom for uh, for an amino acid so these are different this helix is made up of different amino acids and these amino acids are uh, they have got the side chains and the side chains of these amino acids are going to interact with the um, with the outside of the or with the edges of the nucleotides here in the dna and this specific sequence of the amino acids is would would, would recognize a specific sequence of the dna in this uh, double helix 
but you don't have to confuse it with helix loop helix domain we will study that uh, type of morph later so this is helix turn helix one helix another turn and then another helix here's an example of uh, four different types of uh, uh, DNA binding proteins and all of these proteins they bind to the DNA in the form of dimers this is one monomer this is the second one so uh, this is tryptophan repressor we have already talked about it in uh, prokaryotic gene regulation we have also talked about the cap fragment this is catabolite activator protein we also talked about this protein in the uh, bacterial or prokaryotic uh, gene regulation so that also exists in the form of dimer so this is one monomer this is the second monomer same is true for uh, lambda repressors so um, the uh, lambda repressor and uh, crow proteins they control the bacteriophage, bacteriophage lambda gene expression so they're widely coded uh, uh, they're widely coded proteins or regulatory proteins so uh, the, these proteins they exist in dimers and as you can see the distance between the two recognition helices so, so the red one here and here these are the recognition helices so the distance between the recognition helices is 3.4 nanometers this is important because this is exactly the distance between the two major groups of the DNA so that means one uh, one recognition helix is going to get inserted into the major groove here and the second one is going to get itself inserted in here so and uh, the, the the other motifs these are indicated in uh, blue this is the second motif so this is helix turn helix motif so that was the N terminal uh, which is connected to another alpha helix on the other side so uh, but this is the C terminal motif so these the, the C terminal motifs they are the recognition uh, helices and these helices are going to get themselves inserted into the DNA at two uh, different regions and they exist as dimer we will study this later they can exist as homo dimers or they also have the ability of um, getting together as heterodimers so uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages and why why would they um, uh, assemble together as homo dimers or heterodimers we, we will study all these things in details later but at the moment you need to understand uh, that these uh, proteins can interact with the DNA with the help of their helix turn helix motifs. So these are two alpha helices connected to each other by a short strand of amino acids and the, 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 the helix at the uh, C terminal is the recognition helix in this case which is going to recognize the DNA um, into the major group and they exist as dimers and the distance between the two dimers is 3.4 nanometers and that's exactly the distance between the two major grooves of the DNA. Uh, let's talk about the homeodomain motifs. Uh, we discussed previously that homeodomain motifs are the are, are, are specialized uh, class of uh, basically helix turn helix motifs. So the major difference between helix turn helix motifs and homeodomain motifs is that homeodomain motifs have got three alpha helices rather than two they have three alpha helices and where does this name come from uh, the name comes from homeotic genes or homeoselector genes so what are these genes these genes basically we call them master switches and these master switches basically control the formation of bo body parts in different locations of uh, the living things and here's an example of a fly embryo and here's an example of a mouse these are different uh, genes this is the uh, organization of the genes in uh, four different chromosomes of a mouse and this is one chromosome where it shows the um, the um, organization of the different uh, genes uh, in one chromosome and basically colors represent the regions they control for example uh, so if something goes wrong with these uh, homeotic genes because they are the master switches and the main job of these proteins is to to control the formation of the body parts so it's not like if something goes wrong with these genes uh, you're going to uh, lose a body part so that doesn't happen generally what happens is that it, it is either wrongly placed or it changes the orientation of the 
of, of that body part it's quite possible that this leg might be the leg of the adult fly if something goes wrong with the genes sorry so if something goes wrong with the genes this leg of the of this fruit fly could be located somewhere here at the back or maybe both of these two wings could be on the other side of the fly and if you talk about the mouse it's quite possible that this tail rather than being located at the posterior end is located somewhere at the anterior end so uh, this is the job of the homeotic genes so these homeotic genes basically they are the master regulators and uh, they the products of these homeotic genes are the homeodomain proteins and homeodomain proteins are those proteins which contain these homeodomain motifs so the uh, homeodomain motifs are basically the motifs found on uh, homeodomain proteins and these uh, motifs are generally 60 amino acids in length it means these three helices uh, the, these three trends uh, of alpha helices uh, they're composed of roughly 60 amino acids you, you can study this yourself uh, leave me a question if, 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 if you do not understand anything uh, here's an example of uh, a homeodomain uh, motif bound to its specific uh, DNA um, sequence as you can see there are three alpha helices this is the first alpha helix and then a short strand of amino acids this is the second alpha helix and then there's a short strand of amino acid and here's the third alpha helix so the third alpha helix lies at the C terminal and the first alpha helix lies at the N terminal of the protein or towards the N terminal so uh, as you can see uh, the uh, the first helix and the second helix they are lying anti-parallel to each other so this is the N terminal and this is the C terminal and this is the N terminal and this is C terminal so it goes like this and then a short strand of amino acid and then second helix and then short strand of amino acid and the third alpha helix lies perpendicular to the first two and if we um, exclude the first helix we can see that two and three uh, form a shape that is uh, pretty identical to helix turn helix motifs so this is basically the helix turn helix motif and this is the additional um, alpha helix so uh, the homeodomain motifs they also contain this helix turn helix motifs, motifs but there's an additional uh, helix as well and why is this included here we could skip this and then say because this is the recognition helix the C and then two why why do we include uh, this first helix is that because this is another orientation of the same picture as you can see this is the this is number three the alpha helix shown in red, red here and this was the recognition helix this is going to recognize a certain sequence of uh, nucleotides on the DNA as you can see here aspergine this is going to uh, make bonds with uh, hydrogen bonds with the uh, with the adenine as we have previously discussed if I could go back uh, to this slide here aspergine it is going to develop these two bonds with adenine here this is what it's doing here aspergine and then you have got arginine going to establish another bond with another nucleotide and here is serine going to establish another bond with another uh, nucleotide so uh, why, why why did we include uh, the first helix here as you can see this is the major groove this is the major groove where uh, the recognition helix is inserted and it is going to uh, develop bonds between the nucleotides here but what, what we can see additionally is that arginine uh, from the uh, from the flexible arm of uh, uh, first helix here arginine is going to establish some uh, some bonds with the nucle with, with the nitrogenous bases or with the nucleotides in the minor groove so these are additional bonds so this is not working as a recognition helix rather it is supporting the recognition helix by establishing some additional bonds so roughly we need like uh, 10 to 20 amino acids from alpha helices 
that should bind to the nucleotides on the DNA in order to establish a form bond between the protein and the DNA. So uh, what can happen sometimes that these proteins after initial binding uh, can rebind to another region on the DNA. So it's like they keep rolling or on the DNA or they keep changing their orientation uh, until they find their proper sequence and orientation. So I think uh, that's sufficient for today. We will talk about the next type of morph in our next lecture. Thank you very much.